As we go into the uh, last section of chapter 10, this will finish up uh, Math 109A. Uh, again, I'm working examples, but we're not really giving you the textbook material for all of this. And, you know, we strongly encourage you to read the textbook. That's where the general information is. This is meant as sort of a help in doing some of the examples and maybe some shortcuts. But as we look at chapter 10, section 7, we're introducing complex numbers. When I first started these, we talked about all the different kinds of numbers, uh, the natural numbers, the whole numbers, integers, rational, irrational, and then all of these were real numbers. All the numbers that were on the number line. Well now we're introducing sort of a new kind of number. This number when they first developed it they didn't quite know what to name it so they called it an imaginary number and they take the letter I in low case to stand for that. But what is i? Well, if you take the square root of negative 1, we're going to define i as the square root of negative 1. And then we can manipulate that and kind of go into these imaginary numbers and then into real numbers and there's, you know, there's a connection. So all of these numbers now, including, if we include imaginary, uh, make this new category of numbers, which are called complex numbers. So that's what they're asking us to write. And one of the key things is, if the square root of negative 1 is i, what is i squared? Well, if you square this, and square this, what is the square root of negative 1 squared? Well, it's negative 1. So that i squared is defined as negative 1. Now notice negative 1 is a real number, while i is this imaginary number, which is part of the complex numbers. So sort of keeping that in the background, and we'll pick up on some actual material you need to do this as we go on. So we want to convert this to uh, write in terms of i. So this would be then the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 72. So the square root of negative 1, we said, was i. So this would become i, the square root of 72. Now we know 72 has a perfect square factor in there. And that is going to be i, the square root of 36, times the square root of 2. So the square root of 36 is 6. So this then becomes 6i, the square root of 2. And by protocol, we usually put the i in front of the radical sign. So again, this one is going to be i, the square root of 144. That's the negative 1 that we take out of there. And the square root of 144 is 12. So this becomes 12i. Now again, you can take out the i. And you're left with a square root of 9 over the square root of 16. 
which becomes 3 fourths i. Now, when we have a real number, we usually put the i after it. Now here, this is going to be, now notice the negative is there. So that negative stays there, negative i, and then that's 2 thirds. So the negative part of the radical comes out as the i. The negative sign stays there. And we just take the square root now of 4 and 9. And then this becomes 10. The uh, square root of 4. Well, we just had some uh, other tutors come in. So I went out to greet them for a moment. But we're on number 5. Again, this is going to be 10 i. And then what's under the radical sign is 48. So we know that there's a perfect square factor in there of 16 times 3. So this 16 comes out of there as a 4. So 4 times 10, 40i, make that more pretty there, the square root of 3. Again, there's lots of things that we're bringing into this from previous lessons, but the key is if you have a square root with a negative sign, now we can actually work with it. We define it as the letter i. And i squared, we're going to define as a negative 1. Now, another important part of this lesson is to write these in what we call standard form of a complex number. And that's where a is the real number part, and the bi is the imaginary part. And again, b would be just a regular real number, but when it's attached to the i, it's imaginary. And then together in this form, it is a complex number. Now, generally speaking, just like we were rationalizing the denominator, we don't want to have i in the denominator. So what we do is we multiply i by its conjugate which happens to be a negative i. So, i times i is going to be i squared, but a negative i squared. And our numerator becomes a negative 5i. Now we're not finished yet, but we have to go up here to where we define what is i squared. i squared, we said, was a negative 1. Well, the opposite of a negative 1 is a positive 1, and our numerator is negative 5i. So generally speaking, we don't write numbers over 1. We know it's there. So the answer to number 6 is negative 5i. Mm, I checked it out, and that's true. Now, here you might think that in multiplying this is a negative and this is a negative that becomes a positive. But when you are dealing with complex numbers, you can't do it that way. What you do is you say this is i, the square root of 12. And then this is i, the square root of 48. So now when we multiply i times i, we know we're going to get an i squared, which is a negative 1. And we know this is 4 times 3, or 2, the square root of 3. 
And then this is 16 times 3. So this would be 4, the square root of 3. And we now know that we have 2 times 4 is 8. The square root of 3, which is the square root of 9, which is 3. And then don't forget we have i squared, which was a negative 1. So for number 7, after all of that, it ends up being negative 24. And that's correct, too. Okay, so we're starting complex numbers. A few more things I want to show you. We'll get to them shortly. So in doing number 8, again, we pull out the i's, and we get square root of 10 times the square root of 15, which is the square root of 150 which we can factor into its perfect square factor of 25 times 6. Pull out the square root of 25 as 5. So there's our answer. Now in number 9, if we pull out the i's, these then become positive. And we can put that all under one radical sign now. That would be 400 divided by 20. We can cancel that out. And this gives us, and notice that the i's cancel out as well. This gives us square root of 20. And the square root of 20, you recall, is the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. So this would be 2, the square root of 5. Now, in this next part, where we deal with uh, just addition of complex numbers, we treat the i just as if it were a variable, which in a sense it is, and we get rid of parentheses and do all those things. So, again, getting rid of this parentheses, here we can just get rid of it, we take the opposite signs of these. So get rid of the parentheses by changing the signs. This becomes a negative 1. This becomes a positive 4i. So 7 minus 1 is 6 plus 6i. Notice this is now in standard form, which is what they'll want you to do as you put these answers into MATLAB. Again, these are all positive, so we can just get rid of the parentheses. So only when there's a negative, when we get rid of the parentheses, we have to change the signs. So this is going to be 2 plus 7 is 9. Uh, remember, there's a 1 there, and a 4 gives me a 5i, the square root of 3. So, pretty straightforward. It's when we multiply that it gets a little challenging, and that's what we're going to do next. Okay, here is a multiplying a monomial by a binomial. 21i minus 35 I squared. Now, whenever you multiply and you get an I squared, you have to convert that I squared to a negative 1. So this then is a negative 35 times a negative 1, which will make this a positive 35. And if you put that answer into MATLAB, they're going to count it wrong because it's not in standard form. So to put it in standard form, just switch them around. Okay? Now here we're doing the FOIL. First, 18. Outers. 
inners, blast. Now again, you could do the outers and inners mentally, but it's okay to write it out. And keep in mind that this is going to become a negative 10 times negative 1. This is going to become a positive 10 because of the i squared. Now we add these two together. This gives us 28. And then we add these two together and we get a positive 24i. And notice it's now in standard form. All right, this one is that special technique again. Square the first term. Multiply these two together. That's a 35i. Double it. And then square the last term. But what do we know about i squared? It's a negative 1. So this is going to become now a negative 49. So a negative 49 and a 25 gives us a negative 24 plus 70i. It's now in standard form. Okay, here we're dividing, and we want to get rid of any imaginary numbers we have in our denominator. So here's where our conjugate comes in again. We're going to multiply this by its conjugate. sure it's in standard form, a plus bi. So this is going to be 36. This is going to be a negative 4i squared. But we know the i squared is a negative 1, so this becomes a positive 4. So 2i times 2i is a negative 4i squared. i squared is a negative 1. It makes this a positive 4. And this becomes 24 minus 8i. Now, again, you're not there yet. Uh, this bottom is going to become 40. And my numerator is going to become... Uh, 24 minus 8i. And you might say, oh, can't you do some canceling out there? Yeah. But uh, a good way to do it would be is to put that 40 like this and the negative sign right there. And now you start to cancel out. Well, you can take a 2 out of there, and that becomes a 12. Or I guess I can take a 4 out of there better. So that's going to be 6 over 10. And it looks like I could take a bigger number out of there. 8. And that becomes 3 out of 5. Yes. I probably should work these out ahead of time. And then here, this is going to be a negative one-fifth i. Now, perfect form, standard form, and uh, that's how we got it. Okay, this one is going to be negative two times negative two is a positive four. This becomes a negative... 25i squared 
which makes it a positive 25. So negative times negative makes it a negative 25 i squared. But i squared is a negative 1. So this becomes a positive 25. And then we do our foil up here. This will be a positive 8. My outers a negative 20i. My inners a negative 14i. And my last a positive 35i squared. But we know this is going to be a negative 35. I squared is a negative 1, so we can just save a little rewriting here. So this bottom now is going to become 29. This is going to become a negative uh, 27, I believe. And this becomes a negative 20i. And that would be good, except it's not quite in standard form. For standard form, we have to put this over 29 and this over 29. Put the minus sign right there. And we can put the minus sign right there, too. And I believe that is correct. Let's check it. Number 17. Well, this part's right. This part's off here a little bit. Oh, 20 plus 14, how about being a negative 34? There we go. Again, check your work. It's easy to make little errors here. Apologize for this one here. Okay, we'll try one more. 